Hello everyone and welcome back to another Babylon Irons video. A little bit of breaking news falling on social media this evening around Yusuf Fafana, a player we've been speaking about for a very, very long time on this channel. And it looks like we could be trying to make a move here. It's uh, with the Lekeep saying that we've made a 35 million euro offer to Monaco for Yusuf Fafana and announced that Monaco are trying to drive for him. And yeah, so there's two sides to this story. Number one is... AC Milan are already in talks to sign for Fana, uh, but they're kind of nowhere near that price tag of 35 million. I think they've offered around 15 or 20 million. So it looks like we're going straight in for the kill if we can try and get this over the line. However, to caveat that, this was then followed by another tweet. So again, we don't know how reliable each of these are. I'm sure we'll get more confirmation as it breaks, but this is what was said after. It said that Fafana has turned West Ham down. He wants to join AC Milan, who are not close to meeting Monaco's valuation. So, again, that's come from Damasio, Italian journalist, Italian source for AC Milan. I don't know. It seems a little bit jumped the gun right now. It wouldn't surprise me if he's turned us down for AC Milan, because who wouldn't do that? But I think this is definitely one to keep an eye on. And after last night's preseason game, it looks like we're trying to pull the trigger. I know Lopetegui said himself, there's a lot of work to do. So... Yeah, Yusuf Fafana, if it does become more concrete, we'll do a proper, proper detailed breakdown video. But we do have some stuff to go over through. So this would be an incredible signing. Pretty much the perfect signing to play in that kind of number eight role alongside Alvarez and, say, a Paqueta. And it would just add so much dynamism to that midfield. And, you know, you can see here as an overview, if you're not entirely sure who Fafana is, he, he currently plays for Monaco. Um, he's six foot one, French, uh, right footed. Still only 25 years old. His contract expires next June. So still only a year left of it on his contract. And he has an estimated value of around 30 million euros, according to Transfermarkt. But we know Monaco wants around 35 million euros. And you can see here on the graph where his heat map was for last season um, for Monaco. They often played either in a 4-4-2 or a 4-2-3-1, where he was kind of next to that defensive midfielder as the, the deep lying eight next to the six. So Yusuf Fana still only 25 years old, it would be an incredible signing if West Ham can pull this off. That's first things first, that's what to say about it. Um, he's an excellent ball carrier. He's very, very strong on the ball. He's someone that can drive with the ball. It's what we've missed in the midfield for so, so long. And something we feel like we need to implement into that midfield free next season is a ball carrier, whether that's Kudos playing slightly further forwards, whether that's Fafana building from deep and driving through the lines. And, you know, his passing as well is very, very good. He's very strong defensively and offensively, kind of has a very nice balance there. A bit, bit of work to do defensively, but overall, he's an incredibly well-rounded eight. That would be his best position, playing in that kind of right central midfield role. As you can see on the overview here, his heat map slightly leans towards the right-hand side because that's where he often plays for Monaco and tends to pick up a lot of positions there. But he's all over the midfield, really, and it would just be an excellent signing it really really would and you know we look at his stats from last season comparing him to other midfielders you can see here what type of player he is you know he is a very very well-rounded number eight in midfield and you can see just a breakdown of everything whether that's offensive duels one offensive duels um you know uh, the amount of dribbles he's making the progressive runs the assists the key passes per 90 um, the progressive passes per 90, he's in very, very high percentiles for both of those. Forward passes per 90 in the 96th percentile uh, with around 52 forward passes per, per 90 minutes. And you've, he's also got a defensive side towards the bottom. You know, he's got, you know, interceptions, 88, uh, interceptions per 90, sorry, 83rd percentile, averaging around 4.6 interceptions per 90, which is very, very high. Defensive duels, one percentage, 83%. Um, successful defensive action, 74th percentile. Uh, so he's just a very, very well-rounded player. And another one around his passing, you know, passes to the final third per 90. He's averaging around nine. Passes to the penalty area per 90. He's averaging 2.77, which puts him in the 85th percentile. So just a very, very progressive, forward-thinking midfielder. He also has the industrial side to break up play and to intercept where needed. If you're playing as that kind of advanced state, which is, again, Juno Lopetegui, we've seen how he wants to implement his style. It's forward thinking. It's high pressure you know, football. You're going to need people who can intercept the ball and create those turnovers in the middle of the park through their athleticism, dynamism and reading of the game. And then also having the technical ability to distribute, distribute the ball forwards once they've regained possession. So... 
it would be a massive upgrade. I think you look at the the current candidates for that number eight position, it's likely to be someone like a Ward Prowse, a Suchek, even someone like a Potts is playing in there at the moment. Yusuf Fafana is a complete level above what we've seen. You know, Suchek, we we saw last night in the preseason match. Again, I don't want to go in too heavy in a preseason, but, you know, that first goal was because of a simple pass that he couldn't play in a pressurized situation in midfield. I'm not saying Yusuf Fafana might not make mistakes like that, but he's very unlikely to, and he's much better on the ball and, you know, figuring out the best way to play out of a situation like that. And it's something we need, you know, it's something we've massively missed for a very long time in the middle of the park at West Ham. You know, we've, we saw it with Declan Rice when he, in a second season, started to charge forwards. We had Suchek kind of sitting back and our midfield was just absolutely nowhere to be seen in no man's land. What this does is if you have Alvarez as the anchor in that six, if you have someone like Yusuf, Yusuf Fafana next to him, he's going to be able to progress the ball very, very well next to him and break those lines, whether that's beating players, whether that's with his key passes into the uh, final third through his through his technical ability, or whether it's just sheer power and force and just you know bullying players on the pitch because that's what he'll be able to do. So in terms of you know the physicality of the Premier League, he'll have absolutely no problem with that. And it would just be a really, really good signing. This video is sponsored by Emotive. Emotive provide cutting edge digital services, solutions and training to companies and businesses of all sizes. Emotive have worked with some fantastic brands in the past, as you can see behind me, the likes of Apple, Google, Tesco and of course, Babylon Irons. Emotive offer four key services, the first being digital solutions, the second being professional training and coaching, the third being fractional experts, and the fourth being AI readiness. We're going to be working with Emotive on our channel to improve how we showcase the data to you guys in our breakdown videos and data analysis videos. If you want to find out more information about how Emotive can work with you, make sure to scan the QR code now, which will take you to emotivetouch.com, where you can find out more details about the company and the link will be in the description. A massive thank you to Emotive once again for sponsoring this video. And let's get back to it. 35 million euros as well is, again, is a player that's only got one year left on his contract. So you could look at it that way and say, mm, is that slightly overpaying? But to be honest, for the talent, it's probably not because you're getting one of the best eights in Europe to play in a system where we desperately need that type of player. So for me, it would be an absolutely amazing signing. Um, again, we would definitely do a more detailed breakdown should more come from this. Again, we'll probably get by the time this is released this evening, there might be some more updates or news on this. But yeah, Yusuf Afana, it's a player we've, you know, myself, Mike and Sloth, we've all advocated for a massively long time on Babylon. And it would be a serious signing and if we can pull this off this would be the the kudos of last season if you want to say that for our signings uh coming in and it's again addressing a position we massively need to improve on still work to do in other areas like left wing striker bringing in another right back maybe another center back as well if zuma uh, departs which is looking more and more likely we'd want to see that happen so bringing in someone like fafana to kind of solidify that midfield and offer something completely different to what we currently have would be massive. It's the type of personnel we don't currently have in that midfield setup. And it just takes so much pressure off players like Lucas Paqueta, players like Edson Alvarez, because Alvarez can be focusing on being the anchor. Paqueta can be more focused on creating, you know, those difficult, uh, difficult opportunities with his key passing. And obviously also being that number eight who can break up play and distribute. But then you've got Fafana, who we know will carry the ball. And again, applies less pressure on someone like Kudus to progress the ball if we want to play him out on the you know on the right hand side or if we want to play him slightly further advanced it's not all just reliant on him to carry the ball or someone like Jared Bowen so you have that person in midfield that can carry the ball like Fafana can it completely changes the dynamic of that midfield which is why it would be such a smart signing for West Ham to make especially under the way Julian Lopetegui wants to play so for me this would be probably a nine out of 10 signing it, it, you know we'd never give a 10 out of 10 really unless we sign him for like 5 million but you know I think 35 million is a very good price to sign him for if we can get him done this summer um again going to be very difficult to do with AC Milan and you know he's probably got his his eyes set on that move if that's the talks that have been taking place but we may be able to tempt him you know Premier League football fantastic minutes you know regularly first team uh, appearances in the Premier League for a club that's building to come and play with the likes of Paqueta, Alvarez, Kudus, Bowen, 
uh, it's, you know, we, we could make it happen as well. The financial impact, uh, the financial incentive we'd be able to offer for Fana compared to AC Milan is probably a little bit higher. So this is definitely one to keep an eye on. Um, then again, there may be stuff that's come out after this that completely contradicts what I'm saying right now. But in terms of player personnel, use of Fafana to West Ham would be an incredible signing. It really, really would. So definitely one to keep an eye on. Um, if you enjoyed kind of the stats overview, make sure to leave a like on this video as that massively helps us out. And let me know in the comments, do you want to see Fafana at West Ham this season under Julian Lopetegui? Because for me, it is an absolute no-brainer and we should be doing everything we can to try and make this transfer happen. But yeah, that's all for today. Make sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you are new around here. And until the next one, come on you irons.